It's only the beginning of 2024, but already there are some amazing shows to watch. From science fiction to action-packed thrillers, there is something for everyone. Uh, 
the different songs together and we will be releasing them in the, in the upcoming uh, months uh, as well. I'm looking forward to that. The latest one that we released is called Little Sunshine Girl, which is kind of a, a neat hybrid. It has some country vibes and um, it also has some reggae vibes with some steel drums and so forth. And it's a really great uh, summer uh, beach theme uh, production. When I buy new gear, I don't need a lot of gear. And a lot of places that I perform might be a senior's home, a hospital, uh, before in taverns, and, and most of these most of these places already have their own, uh, you know, PA systems and amps and mics and so forth. So there isn't a lot to carry, uh, you know, as a solo artist uh, per se. I typically just need a guitar case and a back sack, and I can put everything uh, into a back sack. For stage performances, I like the Sennhauser A835. It's a great stage mic. It's a dynamic uh, cardio mic. It runs for about $150 uh, Canadian. It doesn't come with a pop screen, so you can pick one up for about $10. It really projects well. It cuts through high volumes on the stage. Um, it's also very robust, so if you drop it and so forth, it won't get dented. It's a uh, XL3 cable mic, and I wouldn't buy any mic that isn't an XL3 type uh, to begin with. For home recordings, I use the Lu Luit Pure 44A1. It's a true large gold layer condenser uh, studio quality microphone. Um, it's, uh, it's, it's, it runs about $400 uh, Canadian. It's best in class for vocals and instrumentals. And I use it for home recordings of vocals and for things like six string uh, guitar. Um, it has an incredible uh, self noise uh, rating of only seven decibels, which is pushing studio quality sound uh, in a sound chamber. And it has a high end capsule and circuit design. And it has, I love, there's a removable metal pop filter uh, that you could uh, re remove, and it's a really uh, cool. Uh, design. As a musician, you can literally have hundreds of special effect pedals for your guitar. However, to pack it and travel light, uh, it's difficult to do. Um, again, I really like this. Uh, I use this all-in-one sort of unit. It's called the GX1 on Zoom FX unit. It has a built-in electronic tuner, expression, pedal, and over 100 sound effects with the ability to use up to five at any given time. And it also has 68 uh, built-in drum effects and styles from rock, disco, jazz, uh, etc. It's very easy to set up, very easy to program. Um, it's very compact, so you can put it into a back sack to carry it. It sells for about $180 uh, Canadian. So as a, as a solo artist, it's uh, really great on stage because you can use, it r runs on batteries as well. Um, so, so it's great for live performances and you don't have to fiddle around with uh, elect electrical outlets. I also bring my own 10 channel Pro FX uh, uh, Mackie, um, uh, which is uh, a mixer for about $400 it only weighs four and a half pounds, so about the weight of a, a laptop. Easy to carry again in, in, a, in a back sack. If you have to, you know, pack it up, use public transport, you know, if you're using buses or subways and so forth, or a train, uh, easily portable with as a solo uh, musician. It has a USB connectivity, uh, so it's easy to hook up to your portable laptop computer. Uh, it's perfect for live sound, uh, home recordings, uh, content creation, live streaming. Uh, it has included Pro Tools with it. It's equipped with four Onyx mic press offerings up to six decibels of gain and ultra noise uh, performance. Uh, it also comes with um, uh, you know a whole bunch of uh, different uh, FX options from uh, reverb to delay. So you can add some drama, drama to your sound on, on stage or mixing. Uh, I simply love this, this mixer. What I wish to emphasize is that I'm not uh, here to endorse
endorse it. This is not an ad for any of these products that I made, made and that I have mentioned here. Uh, these are only uh, some of the equipment that I use uh, around my house and when I'm on the road. Links and merch. I don't have any merchandise uh, yet. However, I will provide uh, you know, a file here with my uh, with all my links to all my social media sites, uh, such as Facebook, S, Twitter, Instagram. I'm on all of these uh, these platforms. Um, if you wish to find find me, I'm easy to locate at Wally Bartfay Music Productions or simply Bartfay Music. If you type it in on your search engine, you will find me. Um, I also have a website, which I will provide the link in. My music videos are on YouTube and also on streaming platforms like Vivo and Roku. And I'm on all the distribution sites, all the major distribution sites like Spotify and iTunes. Some uh, credits for music videos, names of Jaws performs, or honor, other honors to mention. While I have done the, uh, in the past year and a half or so, various radio and podcast interviews uh, related to my uh, chart topic songs and also related to my research uh, related to music as medicine. Uh, with patients with Alzheimer's disease and other uh, forms of dementia. Uh, as I mentioned, uh, one of our recent collaborations, You're My Beautiful, which is a special song I wrote for my wife, Emma, uh, to mark three milestones in her life. The first one was, uh, of course, I wrote it for her birthday, her retirement, and also to mark the fact that she's a 10-year breast cancer survivor. So it was a special song that I wrote. It hit number one on the World Indie chart list in January 2024. It's a collaboration with Stephen Wrench from Music and Film. And also the Euro Indie Network uh, uh, music chart lists. Um, another one that hit num uh, number two on those lists uh, was uh, a really honky tonk song, or a fun honky tonk song called It's Friday Night. So please uh, check, check those out. Uh, Another question, food and amp touring. What are your tours like? Where were your favorite places to eat? Um, as mentioned during my introduction, I only really rediscovered music and songwriting during the COVID lock lockdown. Hence, most of my so-called public performances have been limited to the classroom and the occasional hospital unit or seniors and veteran home. Um, however, uh, I wish to mention as uh, associate dean, I actually uh, had the pleasure of spearheading uh, a specialized 23-bed uh, dementia unit called the Clinical Demonstration Unit with the help of staff and, and faculty and students at Ontario Shore Center for Mental Health Sciences. It's located here in Whitby, Ontario, Canada. Um, I'm very proud of this collaboration coming to fruition after much work by both institutions. So what we want to do on this unit is look for non-invasive, non-pharmacological interventions and research with patients with advanced dementia um, who suffer from BPSDs. BPSDs are uh, behavioral and psychological symptoms of dementia, things like hallucinations, um, sundowning, pacing, agitation, depression, depression. These are all common symptoms associated with uh, Alzheimer's disease and dementia. There are a hundred different forms of dementia. Alzheimer's is the most common type. But we looked at interventions, um, including light therapy. We know that here in Canada, we don't get enough sunlight because we're always covered up, especially in winter time. And uh, so we lack vitamin D. And if you don't have enough vitamin D, it can lead to depression. So light therapy, uh, we've looked at reminiscent therapy, where we show old uh, photo albums or old images, movies and so forth that they may worry or items that the individual may have and helps them to recall and also music therapy. We've done some very interesting studies looking at uh, you know, baseline measures for these BPSDs, how many uh, 
outbursts that were happening, uh, looking at how music therapy administered three times a week on uh, individualized, customized uh, playlists, uh, decrease these BPSDs during and also post after these incidences. And these have been published in scientific uh, peer-reviewed uh, journals. Uh, regard to food on the road, well, I tend to avoid ultra-processed foods to begin with, uh, being in the uh, you know, field of health sciences. Um, food that I consume is usually cafeteria food uh, when I'm on the road, which is surprisingly uh, very good, uh, especially in nursing and seniors' homes. They're, they're well-balanced, they're very nutritious in nature, and they're very well-prepared hot meals. Performance, what our show's like and what should fans uh, expect. Uh, well, back in my 20s, uh, when I used to give gigs, gigs in various uh, coffee houses and bistros uh, in Montreal with my friend and fellow physician, uh, Danny Arsenault, unfortunately, Danny uh, passed away in the summer of 2000. Uh, he was installing a ham radio on top of his roof, and uh, he happened to touch an electrical wire and overhead and uh, was electrocuted unfortunately and died. But what we would typically do, we would do a mix of songs from various artists including the great Canadian folk singer Gordon Lightfoot, uh, you know, classic uh, country songs like uh, Johnny Cash, uh, John Denver, we would roll out Bruce Springsteen, uh, Fleetwood Mac and Stones for example. But we also did original music uh, that I wrote. Uh, I mentioned Mulberry Hill Gal, which is one of my uh, very first songs that I wrote, and of course a song that we really got the crowd going called the Sweet Rock and Roll. Um, I actually, I will be retiring in August of 2024 after being in academia and healthcare and doing clinical and bench research for over 35 years now. However, I still plan to do research related to music as medicine and, and music therapy. I don't have any immediate uh, post-retirement gigs per se, but I have done several radio and podcast interviews over the past year or so related to my music and also patients with dementia and music as medicine. And I, uh, I have uh, some other interviews and so forth uh, lined up, so I will be uh, doing those. I also plan to do more music videos that I like to uh, produce myself and film and be as a videographer. I do all my uh, own videography and photography myself. I, I enjoy that. In fact, I've published six textbooks related to uh, public health, community health, epidemiology, things like that and about 80% of the photos that are in these textbooks. I've, I've actually taken my, my, myself as a hobby. What is your all-time all favorite quote, and why do you have some, and, and what sort of advice for someone wanting to follow in your footsteps? Well, I'm not sure if this quote is from someone else per se, or it originated, but it's something I knew and lived by since I was a child. And the quote goes like this, if you want something done, ask someone who's busy. If you want something done, ask someone who's busy. I use this with my own boys uh, who are grown up now and, and uh, adults, young adults, and also my undergraduate and graduate students. And I must confess that it's something that is true to the last words. Busy people get things done. They are dependable. They can juggle multiple balls simultaneously in the air and multitask. They don't hesitate or procrastinate and have positive energy and vibe that fills a room. Gravitate to these individuals. And uh, advice for someone to follow in my footsteps? Well, do something that you truly are pas passionate about and never get bored and tired of doing. Stay away from negative energy people who procrastinate and never finish what they start and can get things done. If you truly enjoy what you do, like writing music and performing for others, and feel charged afterwards and continue doing this, however, if songwriting or performing becomes a chore or a task that 
gives you little personal satisfaction, drive or reward, then you're in the wrong business, my friend. What I did this past weekend, well actually I enjoy working with my hands. I do, uh, I like to build my own furniture. I made a colonial style bed, some coffee tables, and uh, you know, side tables, and uh, a kitchen trolley, and you know, did different, different projects like that that I enjoyed doing some woodworking. working. Um, I also enjoyed doing renovations, so this weekend I actually uh, did some tile work in the bathroom upstairs and installed a new uh, vanity uh, in the hallway bathroom upstairs. Um, what should we expect uh, that's next for you? Uh, well, I'm currently working on an album entitled Timeless. Um, and uh, it has a, a lot of time-themed uh, songs uh, about reminiscing and so forth. Um, Borrowed Time, for example, is a, a song I wrote about the disappearing uh, lifestyle of the cowboy uh, here in uh, where I'm working now in North Oshawa, uh, just a five minute walk away, we had the famous uh, Winfield Farms where there was a lot of uh, real famous thoroughbreds that won the Kentucky uh, Derby, um, the Northern Dancer back in 64. Uh, in um, and uh, all those farms, we had cattle farms, uh, about five minute walk from my home. Um, when my boys were small, we used to go to the fence and you could put a carrot through the fence and it would feed the horses. All that has disappeared due to urbanization and growth of the GTA, the Greater Toronto Area. So people are moving uh, out into this area, uh, east of Toronto. And all of those farmlands, those, you know, those uh, beef farms, and cattle farms, and ranches, and of course Winfield Farms have all disappeared and have been replaced now by high-rise apartment buildings, condos, townhouses. Um, so it's a real shame. So that uh, that talks about the disappearing, not only here in the GTA, but around Canada and North America and other places due to urbanization and population growth, that, that sort of uh, living wild and free lifestyle is disappearing. Um, I also uh, co-wrote three songs uh, recently with uh, Stephen Wrench from uh, Music and Film. Uh, that we'll, we will be recording and releasing in the next few months. So keep an eye out for uh, Summer of 85, again, a, a time-themed, reminiscent type of, uh, uh, you know, coming-of-age sort of song. Uh, Cherry Hill Gal, which is a real fun country song, and Ripple of Time. So keep an eye out for those folks. It's been the most rewarding aspect of your career thus far. Um, well, I guess I have been blessed in several ways because I discovered the joy of music at a very young age, performing for seniors and veterans in my community, uh, which has given me immense pleasure to do so and heartwarming, especially during times like Christmas holidays. My father uh, unfortunately had a series of hemorrhagic strokes leading into the brain and uh, developed uh, vascular dementia. And ironically, he ended up in that same nursing home in Shanaki that I used to put on Christmas concerts with. Um, and he also suffered from these BPSDs that I mentioned earlier, these behavioral and psychological symptoms of dementia, including uh, you know, hallucinations and aggression and so forth, depression. Um, and when he would have this episode, I would uh, sing him folk songs. So it's music therapy. That was. Uh, music therapy uh, applied uh, either all over the phone, I actually would sing some old folk songs that we sang in the cottage around the, the campfire, and, and he would sing along and this would distract him and he would calm down. Uh, so that was one of my, my personal experiences from a family member, uh, from my father, of how music can really be medicine. But my first clinical experience was back in the 80s in, um, in Verdun, Quebec, uh, at a psychiatric hospital called Douglas Hospital. There was a, uh, uh, an elderly female uh, in her late 80s, um, I believe 88 or 89 years of age, and I read in her chart that she was a former music teacher. She played piano, and when I was reviewing her chart, and her daughter happened to be there, and uh, she was very disconnected from her environment, her 
head was down and very disconnected. And with her daughter, we ruled, uh, wheeled her into a common room where there was an old stand-up piano. And I placed her hands on the piano. And after about four or five seconds, she started to play. She started to play. And her, her affect, her face and so forth, just lit up. And uh, she played for over an hour and a half. And her daughter, it was like turning on a light switch, her daughter said, uh, from light to dark. She became alive again. You know, she was totally in that vegetative state, almost like. And she, she could see the joy in her, in her, in her face and, and her expression joy of playing music so music really you know reconnected and, and charged up a lot of those neurons in her brain and when we take a, um, a CT scan or an imaging scan of the brain at rest for these patients uh, there's not a lot of activity or a lot of color that shows up on, on these scans but uh, when we play a familiar uh, tune to it uh, the, you know, an old song that they may be familiar with you can see that their brain actually lights up like a Christmas tree. So, um, you know, my own personal connection with my dad, music therapy, working with patients with dementia and other forms, uh, you know, Alzheimer's disease and other forms of dementia, uh, has been uh, really, really um, uh, a blessing and able to do, in, in my capacity at least, um, to do research, clinical research related to it, and document some of the benefits of music, uh, music, and uh, also looking at things like binaural beat therapies and uh, noise therapies such as pink noise, and brown noise, and gray noise, uh, where we use it to treat insomnia, ADHD, and uh, gray noise for tinnitus as well, or ringing in the ear. So it has a lot of uh, clinical applications. We're really in its infancy, and we're just starting to really discover uh, some of the, uh, the magic of, of, of medicine and how it can touch our, our, you know, our, our heart and our soul and, our, and, and recharge our minds as well. Uh, information to give fans regarding shows and, and future concerts. Um, as I mentioned, I don't have any immediate gigs lined up post-retirement, but I have done several radio and podcast interviews over the past years and have, have some lined up as well. Um, I will continue to do, uh, even when I'm retiring this August of 2024 uh, from academia, uh, I wish to continue to do some work with uh, music as medicine and music therapy with patients with dementia. And, uh, you know, keep an eye out for some of my uh, chart-topping songs uh, that, I will, that I have released uh, over the past year and our upcoming songs including our new releases with Nestle and Rich, including uh, Summer 85, uh, Cherry Hill Gal, and Ripples of Time in the next few months. Um, lastly, uh, please check out my upcoming album entitled Timeless. You're my Touch.